Hi, I'm Larry Puckett, the DCC Guy. Today I want to talk to you about programming tracks. You know, I covered programming tracks, uh, how to set them up and the like, in the uh, June 2019 issue of Model Railrider in my DCC Corner column. So if you have that copy available, grab it and take a look at it in your spare time. Although I'm going to cover a lot of what I covered in that one uh, right here, uh, in addition to a lot more. What I want to do now, though, is um, let's take a look down here at the uh, workbench where I've got a bunch of stuff laid out for you to look at. Before we go on, I want to ask you to take a moment to subscribe to the channel. It's simple, easy, and free. All you have to do is hit that little red uh, subscribe button, and when the little bell comes up, click on it and click all. Let's go ahead and uh, take a look at a couple of different approaches or uh, ways that uh, DCC systems actually do their programming. Now, the vast majority of DCC systems made today uh, have both programming output and track output. If you look right here, we have uh, outputs labeled PA and PB and RA and RB. So P, A, and B are programming outputs, and R, A, and B are your rail outputs. So with these, you can uh, operate trains, and you can do your programming simultaneously. You don't have to stop, turn the layout off in order to do your programming. And this is the vast majority of, of uh, DCC systems made today have this capability. Okay, Now, some of the older systems and some of the, the newer beginners type uh, introductory systems uh, do not have that capability. This is an older Digitrex DB, DB150, and you can see it, does, it only has the rail A and the rail B. It does not have a programming A and B, okay? So with this particular type of, of, of command station, uh, you could either or, you could either run trains or program locomotives, but you cannot do both at the same time. And what it does is it uses the rail A and B outputs to power the layout and also to do service mode programming. So that's the limitation there. Now, another one that's uh, very common uh, and very popular today is the power cab. And on the back of the power cab, it has one output that is both for the track and for programming. Okay, so the, the, uh, the NCE power cab, you can do either or. And I'll show you ways to, to set that up in just a second. Okay, so when setting up a programming track, you know, you have several options. Some people like to use just a standard old piece of rail on the top of their workbench that they can hook up to their command station. And, you know, that's what they use. And it works, it's a very effective way to do it. Uh, this one here I've had for, God, 25 years. It was the first programming track I ever made. It's so old, it's even got brass rails. So, you know, I've used it, and I use it a lot. It's great for, you know, taking places with me where I might want to uh, program locomotives. And, um, you know, if I just need to set something up to de hook up to Decoder Pro and, you know, do some quick and dirty work, this is one way to do it. Um, the limitation with this is, you know, you have to pick up your locomotives, you have to put them on the programming track, you have to pick them back up, and you have to put them back on the main line or the, the layout. And as a result, every time you pick a locomotive up and move it, there's a chance you're going to break it, you're going to break details off, you're going to mess up weathering, all kinds of things like that. For that reason, I think it's just a lot more convenient in the end to go ahead and set up a permanent programming track on your model railroad. So let me go ahead and we'll take a look at how to do that. Okay, now, as I said, there's a couple of different ways to go about doing that. And what I have here is a simple double pole, double throw switch, and you can see it's set up with on, off, and on. So with this switch, you can throw it this way to go on, this way to turn it off, and then over here, turns it on again. And 
I like having this center off position. For one thing, it allows you to turn off the truck power if you need to. Another thing to be aware of, this is a big switch, okay? And it is a double pull, double throw. It's rated at 10 amps, okay? So this can be used with just about any command station out there and booster out there. Uh, I don't think there's, I don't know of any boosters that are rated more than 10 amps. So you're not gonna burn up the contacts on this one. You can, of course, get smaller uh, double pull, double throw switches. This one here is rated at six amps. So it's gonna take the current uh, that you're gonna put out from just about any command station and booster uh, until you get up to those eight and 10 amp boosters that are available. Now the way these work is, if you look here, they have three sets of contacts. The center position, which is you know, your, what you're gonna feed with, and then your two outer positions. And those are the ones that you throw to. And when you throw that switch, if you throw it this way, it makes this set of contacts live. If you throw it this way, this set of contacts, okay? So it's kind of the opposite of the, the layout there of the wires, but once you get this installed on your, your layout, I usually uh, mark which is the, the, lead, the uh, direction for the programming track and which is the one for the uh, layout or for track power. And that way you don't have to remember and you know visitors don't have to try to ask over and over again which way do you throw the switch. Okay, now how do you set this up? Now there's two different ways to do this, okay? First, let's take a look at how you would set this up with a DCC system like this that has the capability to run locomotives on the track and program at the same time. Because there are some situations where um, there's a neat way you can do this. Okay, so what you want to do then is you would run these two center wires to the piece of track that you're going to use for your programming track on the layout. Now, that can be any isolated piece of track. It can be a, uh, a siding. It can be a, uh, a section of track in a yard, such as the garden track in the yard. It could be, a, um, it could be your turntable, for example. And uh, another way that you can do this is you could have a section of track, say a, uh, um, a ready track in your yard where you have your locomotives, or it could be the yard lead, something like that. And you could cut rail gaps at each end of a section of track in the middle of that storage track where you can drive a locomotive up onto the isolated section of track, do your programming, and then drive it back off again once you're done. So that's a very convenient way to have a programming track set up on your layout. Okay, now by isolated track, what I mean is you have cut through both rails, okay, so that it is electrically isolated from the rest of the layout. If you don't do that, you're gonna program all your, all your other locomotives. So if you've just got one piece of track at the, you know, in a garden track or on your um, layout somewhere, you would just cut through two rails using a razor saw or a cutoff disc and a Dremel tool is what I would use. Uh, if you're going to have a section of track in the middle of a siding or a ready track in the yard, uh, then you would want to cut gaps at each end, okay? So that's four gaps you're going to need to make. And then it's always, a, a, you know, it's imperative that you mark right on the layout next to those caps because you don't want people setting up their trains, setting up their locomotives, and leaving a wheel over the gap that is going to uh, result in either a short or a, uh, a programming uh, signals being sent out on the track. And what can you do? Well, you could put a couple of, of posts next to the rails where the gaps are. Uh, if it's in a staging yard, though, you could put, you could just paint on the uh, on the layout, big red, bold lines that show the beginning and end of the programming track, and then write programming track right on the section. Okay, and you know that works great. It's great in a staging yard. You know you could have the lead track to the staging yard with a section of tra of rail cut out, so that you could do your programming there. Let's take a look at how you would set up a programming track 
if you're using one of the more modern systems, the more common systems, that allow you to uh, do both uh, uh, programming and operate trains at the same time. So what I've done here is I've taken this double pole, double throw switch, and I've connected the red leads to the programming track outputs and the green leads uh, to the uh, rail power output. And then I've taken the two wires here and we'll assume that we've attached these uh, feeders to the rail. Now, all you have to do then is throw the switch so that it is aligned for track power, drive your locomotive onto the programming track, and then throw your switch the other direction so that it's in contact with the uh, programming leads. You do your programming on that isolated section of track, and then you throw your switch back the other way, and you've got power, track power, back on the isolated track. You can then drive off, and you're done. Okay, It's that straightforward. And as I said, this can be with an isolated individual track. It can be an isolated section in the middle of a, of a yard a lead or something of that nature. So that's the basic way that you go about doing it with these more modern systems. Okay, And that allows you to go ahead, set, the, set it up so that you have both programming leads, track power leads being fed to a single piece of track. Okay. Very easy and very straightforward uh, operation to do. Now, let's take a look at a little bit more complex situation where you're using the other type of, uh, of, of command station that does not have simultaneous uh, uh, power and um, programming capabilities. Okay, so this is a great way to set up a programming track with one of these combined uh, track power and programming uh, systems. Basically, you attach the two center pole wires to the output, as I've done here on the back of the power cab. And then, you know, you're set up, and it, by default, it's going to direct power to your track, to your layout, okay? And I've got it set up that way, so that the switch is thrown to direct power to the layout. Then, you put your locomotive on the programming track, throw the switch for programming, Okay, and then you can go into programming mode on your throttle and do your programming here. And this will be isolated. Okay, you will not get any commands, programming commands sent to your layout. Then when you're done programming, turn power back on your layout. You can run trains and you can put your locomotive back on the layout at that point. Now, how can you go about it so that you can drive a locomotive onto this piece of track on your layout? do your programming, and then get away. Well, it's more complex. Basically, you would have to add another switch here that would be a uh, double pole single throw, so an on-off switch, so that you would have another set of wires coming to the switch and going to the track. You could turn it on when you want track power here after you've turned off the programming, okay? Then, when you want to do your programming, you have to remember to turn this off again. So, like I said, that gets very complex. People are going to forget. You're going to end up with uh, other uh, trains on your layout being re reprogrammed. So I don't recommend trying to go that route. This is about the most straightforward way to do it. You know, have the center pole going to the, to the leads on the uh, command station or to your uh, power cab output with one set of wires going to your track, another set of wires going to your programming track. Do your programming, throw, uh, do your, throw your switch and do your programming, throw your switch back and run your trains. You're still going to have to move the locomotive around. Now one way to do that is have an isolated track on your layout. You can, you know, ease the locomotive onto the programming track, do your programming and ease it back off again. Uh, trying to put up, put two switches on the layout people are going to forget and you're going to end up reprogramming locomotives. Let's look at a, a, a way that uh, simplifies all of this even more though. What I want to show you now is a nice little device that uh, is available uh, from NCE. It's called the Auto SW. And what it does, it allows you to set up a programming track 
using one of these devices or one of these command stations like the PowerCab and the DB150 and some of the others that are uh, beginner systems available on the uh, market that don't have uh, separated uh, power to the layout and programming capability. Okay, so the way we would set this up is we would have the two wires from the uh, circuit board going to the power terminals on the back of the power cab or the DB150 or whatever other command station that you have that uh, um, has this limitation. Okay, then the two wires feed into this circuit. There are two uh, pairs of outputs here on the circuit board. One pair of, of, of wires are labeled program, okay, so you would run those to the programming track, and the other are labeled for the main track, okay, so these provide power to your layout. Now, in its default state, it routes power to your layout. Then, as soon as you start, you put a, a, pro a locomotive on this piece of track, on your isolated programming track, and as soon as you start to send programming commands, this device can detect that. Because in DCC, uh, when it gets ready to do some programming, it sends out what's called a programming preamble, and this device can detect that. And it automatically detects the uh, programming commands coming to the device, and it switches. It switches so that the output goes to the programming leads and to your programming track. And as long as you're sending out programming commands, it's going to do that. And then once you're done, it switches back to the layout power. So it automatically takes care of throwing that switch for you. So you don't have to worry about uh, that problem. You don't have to remember to throw that switch when you want to go back and forth between programming and running trains. Okay? So I, you know, I highly recommend this. It's very reliable. It should work with all DCC systems that are NMRA compatible. Okay, if they comply with the NMRA uh, guidelines and uh, rec um, our standards and RPs with respect to uh, DCC programming, then this device should detect those uh, programming commands and automatically do the switch for you. So I highly recommend this approach uh, over using the uh, big double pull, double throw switch. Well, I hope that gives you some, some guidelines and some ideas for setting up a programming track on your model railroad. You know, having a permanent programming uh, set up uh, on your layout is a great way to streamline your programming process. So go ahead, you know, think about it, get one installed on your layout, and if you have any questions, toss them into the comments, and I try to address every comment right away. Bye now.